Hi guys, I am Guillermo from Google Tech. Today we will talk about filtration technology, which means why do we filter, how do we filter, when do we filter? The main difference is, the first question is, what are we filtering? An air filter is basically what protects your engine from whatever dust is coming to it while inspiring for the combustion chamber. Now the point is, you have to ask yourself, where am I taking the air from? Is it a racetrack? Is it a dirty track? Is it a street? Is it a desert? Is it a sand pit? Where am I filtering? And this also depends on what kind of bike you have. Let's talk about the obvious. Usually, the most demanding systems are the one where you have incredibly fine dust, a cave machine, earth moving machine, uh, agricultural machine, 4x4 trucks, 4x4 vehicles. So let's talk about 4x4 four, four, four four vehicles. This, as you can see, sorry for the dust, but when we do tests, we really put plenty of dust everywhere. It's a Toyota Prado, or also called a Land Cruiser, even though it's not exactly Land Cruiser. And you can see that the air is coming from below, entering the air box from the side, shield here in order that no dust or direct heat will hit the filter, Hitting the filter on the surface, then clean air will come out from the filter and entering the, um, the funnel toward the, the engine. What does it mean? That the filter element is vertical. So you have the most of the dirt, which is big, will bounce off the matrix or the paper or whatever and just end up at the bottom of the airbox. So there is no dust remaining on the filter. This is a design, a proper design for avoiding, uh, to avoid plenty of dust remaining on top of the filter. Next example, adventure bikes or rally bikes, 950 and 990 KTM. This is, in my opinion, the most advanced airbox ever designed. The airbox, basically the air comes from this snorkel up there, goes at the bottom of the airbox, gets from below to the filter, Sorry, it's never easy. So, it hits the bottom of the filter and whatever will not go through the filter or be blocked by the filter will bounce off and stay at the bottom of the airbox. What's very nice about this airbox is that the throttle bodies are inside here, protected from the dust and the dirt. So again, this is a, a design for heavy dust, heavy contamination, sand races and such. As you see, this is a flat filter, not a vertical round one, but Everything goes from below, through the filter, and then up. Like also in the new, for example, Toyota uh, Prado generation and Land, Land Cruisers, where the most of the dirt will bounce off and stay down. So let's move on. Next example. KTM 790. Here again, the filter sits vertical inside the airbox. So again, replicating this kind of system from the Toyota, so whatever comes off will bounce off the filter and stay in the airbox. So the question is, if we know why we are designing and what we are designing, what are the best options? Actually, you try to design a filter and a filter airbox and an airbox in order to face whatever can happen to the bike. You will try to, to avoid dust coming from above, lying on the filter horizontally, so that there will be no pressure, mechanical pressure from the dust to try to enter continuously the filter because of the depression caused by the engine, sucking air, dust and dirt through the filter. And this is the main issue why you try to have either a vertical panel or an inverted panel in uh, enduro bikes. This, for example, is the T7 or MT7 690, you know, the new uh, TNRA from Yamaha. As you can see, the, the air enters from here on both, on the top, flows through the filter. All the dirt will bounce off the matrix and stay at the bottom of the filter. And this is actually a quite smart design when you don't have space, because the point is that you will design a filter according also to the space you have on the bike, depending on where you can put the airbox and what kind of shape the airbox can have. If you have a strange airbox that you can only lay the filter flat, then you have a hard life. So. Having said this, how would you expect a filter for an enduro bike such as a 690 and 701 to be designed? You know very well how it is. This is the airbox. The filter lays 
flat, the air comes from the snorkel through the air box and exits the filter only on this small hole here. So basically, everything which is at the top of the filter, the first part of the filter, only this small area, will start absorbing the most of the dust, saturating. Then slowly, slowly, you will have air coming from here, bouncing off the saturated filter, and entering slowly, slowly, the filter itself. It's not very efficient. Plus, what you have is that this, this part of the filter will saturate very fast, and then this will reduce the flow. This will also incre increase the possibility to damage the matrix. Paper is not that strong. Once saturated, it may rip. Maybe it been, can be hit by bigger uh, particles, and the damage can cause a perforation of the filter. So what do we do? We had to design the filter for the 619701. And we studied, while studying the filter for the big off-road trucks and uh, earth moving machines, yes, we also designed those parts, we came up with the solution that to use this airbox, the best combination would be to use a vertical round or any way with round walls filter. This one. So what do you have here? You have a perfect ceiling, sorry, a perfect closing. As you can see in the picture, the original filter does not seal properly, nor any other OEM uh, aftermarket parts, because they did not study exactly what happened to the, to the airbox. Because here, as you can see, the pressure points are only on the small sides of the filter. The first one is this uh, sort of hinges here. Sorry. Ah. So, first pressure point is here, and the second one if you had, is, is here where are the bolts. Now, do not over tighten those bolts, or you can just pull out the nuts in the plastic. Should you do that, there is a video on YouTube somewhere where they can they show you how to use here uh, a different kind of nut to seal it back. So, we came up with a solution that also this airbox, this cover would bend eventually because the pressure in these two points will just make this box somehow bent and this curve will not apply enough pressure on the long side of the filters. So we came up with yet the solution to close this airbox for good. Not only, as always, you will apply grease at the bottom of the filter where it sits on the rim, but since the rim of the filter is not exactly uh, even, as you can see, you own, you own the box, so you can check on yours as well. There is here a small uh, ring coming off the, the box, but it's not flat. The whole box is bending inside, bending outside. The ring goes up and down. Here it's higher, and here it's lower again, then it's higher, then here it's flat. It's on my airbox, it's practically non-existent. So unless you want, I don't know, to seal with silicone uh, sealant, like from the gasket, you know, liquid gasket for the engines, the only solution was to use our soft rubber, the special one we use on our filters, which allows to close any leads, even the 6, the 790s, and use a differential pressure system, which means we applied, you will receive in the box, in the, together with the filter, you will receive pads made of neoprene, high density, and also a long one, which is self-adhesive, you will just cut the piece or cut this piece, create here a cushion on the long side of the filter, which will, due to the softness of the neoprene, apply the exact amount of force you need to close the lid. So basically, we fix also this issue on another airbox, which is critical for dust contamination. This system also allows all the air coming from this small inlet here to circulate the whole filter and saturate homogeneously the whole media. So this design is quite smart. Both first it replicates the heavy 4x4 and heavy machines, also sand moving machines, earth moving machines are using this design usually, to have the most dirt to simply simply bounce off the matrix and deposit deposit at the bottom of the filter so it will stay here without attacking directly the matrix. Plus with this system, we allow the whole air to circulate and go through the matrix evenly. And then with this system, we also having the possibility to uh, make the specific leap with our special rubber, 
seal better than any other brand in the world. This is our solution for the 690. Obviously, this matrix is the Ultra 4 for desert races and sand races. We are designing also the Super 4, which is for the um, Supermoto, but you know, street version and race version for the track. You have both matrix for this filter. But what we tried here to do is to give you the best performance, the longest maintenance intervals for this filter, avoiding all the weak points and weak spots of this airbox and air filter, providing you the best matrix. This is Kuklatek. We provide solutions with the best technology. If you like the video, if you have more questions, please uh, give us a thumb up, subscribe to our channel, ask us if you have any other information, if you are curious about airboxes design, because we study all of them, we analyze always airboxes, airflow, conditions, what we are filtering, we always design and define where the bike will operate, where you will, your adventure will take you. Follow us, because there will always be new products, new interesting facts, we can give you new information and maybe also new solutions. This is Google Tech. Thank you so much for following us.